Hey everyone, it's Outer here. Just wanted to give you all a quick update on the DEF CON conditions. And I wanted to explain something to you. Okay. Open Source Intelligence, or OSINT, which is private, okay, tells us that we are at DEF CON 3. Now, I want to show you all something. And I, it takes somebody with some intellect and a brain to be able to map together and piece together the truth of the matter and what DEF CON level we really are in a society today that breeds fake news and tries to keep us blind and in the dark. So, if we're speaking statistically based off of a percentage here, I want to show you all something. First, overall current open source intelligence DEF CON level is at a three, right? Flash is at a three, okay? Africa is also at a three. Now, look at everything else. The Middle East, DEF CON 2, that's Central Command. Cyber, Cyber Command is DEF CON 2. Europe, European Command, DEF CON 2. Asia, Indo-Pacific Command, DEF CON 2. USA, Northern Command, DEF CON 2. LATAM, is at Southern Command, which is at a DEF CON 3. Space and Nuclear, DEF CON 2. Nuclear Forces and Space Command are at DEF CON 2, folks. And Spec Ops, DEF CON 2. So, as you can see here, almost everything right now is at a DEF CON 2. If you read all the stuff going on with Europe, with cyber attacks, with Taiwan, now uh, enacting the Patriot Missile Defense System after North Korea fired three ballistic missiles into the South China Sea, or sorry, the uh, um, Sea of Japan. And you have China and its forces in the South China Sea right now, and the things that they are up to, especially with the Philippine ships and stuff like that, the boats, fishing vessels, etc., you have what's going on right now with Israel and Lebanon and Gaza, Iran, Pakistan, and some other things going on with Iran as well. You have Egypt bolstering forces. Okay. You have the Houthis in Yemen. You have Saudi Arabia and Jordan and others that are invoked in this war. Syria and the bombing of Damascus the other day. You have Ukraine and what's been going on there, and Ukraine sending drones into Russia, blowing up oil refineries and airports. Even hit Moscow yesterday with drones. You have this civil war-based um, partisan uprising going on right now in Bel Belgrade and other parts of Russia. Okay, And you also have uh, Belarus bolstering its forces right now I'm talking about thousands, tens of thousands of forces and equipment and everything else right now, 10 kilometers outside of, Lith of, of, Lith uh, blah, of Lithuania, okay? And Lithuania is a NATO ally. So if Putin's going to try to start a proxy using Belarus, or Belarus, should I say, then do you really think that NATO's just going to let... Belarus attack. No, because it's a NATO ally. All of NATO comes together against one, right? Belarus will be leveled. Literally just wiped clean. So when that happens, what do you think Putin's going to do? Nukes. And what's funny is, is that Putin is sitting here talking literally about creating a decontamination zone inside of Ukraine. So forces can't reach into Russia with their drones and artillery. Folks, this is getting very, very severe very quickly, okay? And the political atmosphere here in the United States as well is just very difficult to watch right now. It's very important. And one of the things I wanted to specify too is that we were attacked, okay, by cyber on our cell phones, our communication networks, etc. All right. Russia's been under attack on its defensive command, 
Ukraine's been under attack. Poland, all right, Sweden, and other Eastern-based European NATO-allied countries right now have their GPS system scrambled by a cyber attack from Russia. And this has been ongoing for the past two to three days now. Something big's coming, folks. And if you don't believe me, drive down to your local gas station and see how much they just shot gas prices up. The thing is, is that if you remember right before we went into Iraq, George H.W. Bush, or, you know, George Bush Jr., son Bush, he decided that he was going to invade Iraq because of weapons of mass destruction. And if anybody that's, that was alive back then, if you all remember, when we went to bed, gas prices were $1.99 a gallon. Actually, about no, it was about two oh three a gallon. And the very next day, we went to get gas. It was three forty nine a gallon. And everybody was panicking. They were freaking out. They didn't know what the heck was going on. Why gas prices were so much? People were angry. But the war machine needs to be fed, and this is the thing. This is what happens. And sorry for my noisy cat. Every time I talk, she wants attention. But anyways. This is what happens, folks. <clears throat> and just as in the days of Noah were, <clears throat> so also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving into marriage until the floods came and they did not know it. At that time, because of the sins of men, because we ate from the tree of the Garden of Eden, the forbidden fruit, the one tree in the midst of many, the one that God told us not to eat from in our disobedience, we ate from it. And because of that, the sin of death cursed our kind. Then Cain killed Abel. And because of that, Abel's blood spoke out to God. Now we all must fight to survive by the sweat and blood of our brow, working and tarrying to make sure that we can eat and drink. So the first judgment was by water, the second by fire. Zechariah chapter 14 says, And behold, the curse shall befall them, and as well on all the living things of the land, for on the oxen, the cattle, the sheep, etc. For their skin shall fall off of them while they stand on their feet. Their tongue shall cleave to the roofs of their mouths, and their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets. Nuclear war is coming, folks. It's inevitable. It has been written. The war of Gog and Magog, the prophesied prince of the north, the prince of Rush, Russia. The movement has begun. Israel surrounded by enemies. The ancient people in whose language you shall not understand is spoken of in Amos. Over mountaintops they leap like the sound of many chariots. Before them is like the Garden of Eden, and behind them a desolate wasteland. As stated in Revelation chapter 9, Behold, a 200 million man army, and thus I saw the color of them, for the color of them was fiery red, sulfur yellow, and hygieneth blue. Thus I saw, as it states in the Bible, China now has a 200 million man standing army with the color of a flag that is fiery red and sulfur yellow. And under the guides of the United Nations, since we are no longer really a part of the United Nations, you have the flag of Hygieneth Blue. They shall come in peace, speaking peace when there is no peace. So many things that are happening right now, folks. So many terrible things that are coming upon our planet. Do we wake up, heed God's word, get down on our knees and pray? 
Ask God for guidance, understanding, courage, strength, and grit to be able to persevere through the things that are to come. Remember, the Bible says, he who seeks life shall lose it. Or, sorry, he who, sh he who seeks to save his life shall lose it. But he who forsakes his life for my sake shall surely find it. What people don't understand is that it's not about living for our desires, for our wants and our needs. It's about living for God, our creator. It's about living for Jesus Christ, making sacrifices and doing things that we may not want to do or understand at times. <clears throat> Sometimes God may say that we have to give all of our money to somebody that we don't even know. But that's where faith comes in. Look at Job, lost everything, and God blessed him with an abundance ten times more than what he currently had before. Sometimes it's hard to understand why certain things go the way that they do. Mankind's wicked ways are destroying this planet. Again, just as in the days of Cain. And all I can say is that when the fire comes, where will your faith lie? When the soldiers are marching down the street, will you do whatever it takes to survive? in this world or will you sacrifice all that you know in this world to follow him when the mark of the beast is implemented for those in whom remain a small amount of people a small remnant that will remain on this earth when the mark is given when they say to you and to everyone that a war like this can no longer be fought, as it specifies in Ezekiel chapter 38, right after the war, when God smites down all the arrows and everything that was fired at Israel to where Israel is not destroyed, or Jerusalem, I should say. <clears throat> Jerusalem is not destroyed. It says, there shall be peace for seven years, right? For they shall burn the bucklers and the javelins and the spears and all those weapons for seven years. And for seven months, they shall be burying the bodies in a place that will be known to be called Haman Gog. So... What are we to do in these last days? Remember, seven years is a tribulation period. A thousand years is as a year is a day unto the Lord as spoken in Second Peter. So if a thousand years is a year is a day unto the Lord millennial reign that Jesus Christ is about to have when he comes to this earth to reign over all of the nations is judgment day a thousand years because a thousand years is as a year is a day unto the Lord the millennial reign right judgment day so as we are now in 2024 AD <clears throat> The second day is ending and the third day is beginning. Let us be prepared spiritually above all things. And I wanted to show you guys this too. This is from NY Prepper. Now remember, I don't sell anything. I don't have any advertisers or anything like that. 
When I feel a need to get a message out to you all, I do so. When I have time, I try to make time. But anyways, folks, he says, emergency alert, Belarus deploys brigade next to uh, Lithuania. Taiwan puts Patriot missiles on alert. See, folks, things are escalating quickly. And we know that Apophis is coming. 99942 Apophis. We've talked about this for many years. And 2029 is right around the corner. And if it doesn't hit in 2029, it surely will in 2032. And a lot of people believe that around that time frame, 2030-ish, is when Messiah was crucified and resurrected. And now he is sitting at the right hand of the Father. (coughs) So, I just wanted to give you all that update. Sorry for the long update, but I just felt like those things needed to be said. Remember, love thy neighbor as thyself and love your God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. So thus fulfilleth all the law. Mankind tries to live by the golden rule by saying, treat your brother as you want to be treated. But they forget the number one main part of that message of the golden rule, which is to love your God with your all your heart, mind, body, and soul. If you love God and you love your neighbor, you fulfill the law. Believing in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, as your Lord and Savior, and putting Him first in your life. When you come to God as you are, you repent of your sins, you turn back, you turn away. <clears throat> you become new, a new creation in Christ Jesus. The Word of God in the Bible begins to work on you begins to change you. God begins to shape you and mold you. At times you'll go through things that are hard. Things you don't understand. But it's all for a reason. So remember, be strong and be of good courage. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I've spoken of him in 1 Joshua chapter 9. Be not dismayed. <clears throat> and remember Psalms 23. For the Lord is your shepherd. Okay. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For what can man do to me? Psalms 91. For under the wing of the Almighty shall I take my refuge. Or under the shadow of the Almighty shall I take my refuge. Remember, folks, pray. Fast if you need to. We can prepare in this world to survive. But the fact of the matter is, remember what Jesus said about that person that had his barn full of crops, prepared And yet his life was demanded of him. What good is it to prepare for this world when we should be preparing for the next? It is easier for the camel to go through an eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to get into heaven. And remember, I've never seen a hearse with a trailer hitch. I don't know about you. But I know I've never seen one. Because you can't take any of this with you when you go. For we shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the sound of the last trumpet. As spoken of in Corinthians. For the old must put on the new. For the corruption must put on incorruption. And we shall be made like pillars in the kingdom of God. We shall rule with him, as spoken of in Revelation chapter 2 through 4. 
<clears throat> God is establishing his kingdom. He is choosing his saints. Be ready, folks, for the time is nigh. I love you all. May God bless you all in your understanding. May God help you and keep you in all of your ways. That your ways may glorify him. And that we all may understand the reasoning as to why these things must take place. At times I wonder if Noah really wanted to allow for all those people to die. But he did not defile God's word. He did not, he was not disobedient. He listened. Comes a time and a place when we have to understand that things have to be done. Renewals have to be. Genesis has to take place. Out with the old, in with the new. The world has has fallen. But there is hope around the corner. Trust in Jesus. Look unto him and ask him for guidance. Ask him for help. And if you are not saved, I pray that you get down on your knees and repent and ask God for forgiveness. Look deep inside of your soul and your heart and all the wrongs that you have done. And look unto him and lay those burdens at the cross. And then pick up your cross and follow him. Love you all. I'll pray for you all. And uh, stay safe out there, folks. God bless.